Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Dynon obtains Bonanza 36 Autopilot Certification. Also, Aeronautical Repair Station Association takes FAA to task. And flight training fixes left out of legislation. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Dynon obtains Bonanza 36 Autopilot Certification. Good news for Beechcraft Bonanza owners comes just in time as the Model 36 Series Autopilot has been approved. Previously paused deliveries of Dynon certified Skyview HDX displays can now resume immediately. Equipped with the newest V16.0 software and most up-to-date hardware, the Autopilot is certified for all Model 36, A36, and B36 Bonanzas, or available as an option for its Skyview HDX avionics system. The system features a three-axis autopilot system, yaw dampening, and approach coupling with compatible third-party IFR avionics. Pricing for the most affordable two-axis autopilot system starts at about $4,000 for the Model 36 Bonanza, which includes all required brackets, hardwares, and servo harnesses. If selected, the yaw damper at $815 with its requisite kit included. Other niceties range from the Skyview AP control panel or a control panel with separate knobs for altitude, heading track, and altimeter settings. Bonanzas are only the most recent approval of the company docket, with outstanding projects that will see owners of Cessna 182s, Beechcraft Barons, and Mooney M20s see some similar good news. After the break, unruly airline passengers may face additional consequences. I'll explain after these messages. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back with so much news coming out of the aviation industry. We're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Feds are cracking down on bad travel behavior. Yeah, this was just a matter of time. Unruly airline passengers may face additional consequences for bad behavior under a new partnership between the TSA and FAA. Under the partnership, the FAA will share information of passengers facing fines for unruly behavior with TSA, who may remove the passenger from TSA pre-check screening eligibility, which is a privilege reserved for low-risk travelers. Dixon updates commercial balloon pilot requirements. FAA Administrator Steve Dixon addressed the commercial balloon industry in a short video statement requesting public comments on the agency's proposed rules on medical certification. If finalized, the change would see that pilots operating a hot air balloon for hire will be required to hold second-class medical certificates, much like their counterparts in fixed or rotary wing aircraft. When it comes to safety, the public doesn't differentiate between operators who go above and beyond the rules from those who do the bare minimum, or unfortunately sometimes even less than that. ALPA casts doubt on pilot shortage during Senate hearing. 
ALPA has issued a statement in response to the robust discussion on pilot supply that took place late last week during the Senate Commerce Committee hearing on airline industry oversight. They said in a quote, the suggestion by network carriers that a lack of available pilots is the reason for leaving smaller markets is absurd and simply incorrect. The major ALPA carriers have approximately the same number of pilots currently as they did pre-pandemic. Gulfstream G700 takes sustainable test flight. Gulfstream's continued development of its upcoming G700 has achieved a sustainability milestone, completing its first flight on sustainable fuel blend featuring 83% renewable source Jet A alternatives. The test plane completed a flight from its Savannah, Georgia home, evaluating its performance on more environmentally friendly fuel options. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, as we turn to the rest of the news, Aeronautical Repair Station Association takes FAA to task. The Aeronautical Repair Station Association updated their membership on their disagreement with the FAA over the agency's authority of issuance of airworthiness directives concerning man portable parachutes not installed in an aircraft. The agency, according to ARSA, should only be able to legally enforce their ADs regarding aircraft and their engines, propellers, and appliances, over which they requested clarification in July 2021. On December 3rd, ARSA requested the assistance of the Department of Transportation's Office of General Counsel since the FAA had refused to consider the substantive question of its authority to issue an ID against a parachute. The move could set an interesting precedent against the expansion of powers not specifically authorized by the Federal Code of Regulations. The root issue began in April 2021 when the FAA issued an airworthiness directive for certain parachutes built by uninsured United Parachute Technologies, LLC, regarding the reserve pin cover designs. The directive requires the chutes to be modified prior to the next jump by replacing the parachute container flaps and changing the pin covers to prevent snagging. ARSA appears to believe their actions could set an undesirable precedent going forward. After these messages, flight training fixes left out of legislation once again. Details after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. Screwed again. Flight training fixes left out of legislation. The hopes for a 2021 congressional fix to the FAA's flight training policy that has caused confusion and consternation among pilots was scuttled last week when a bipartisan amendment was cut from the National Defense Authorization Act sent to the president for a signature. The flight training provision, which was included in the House version of the bill, had been introduced in the Senate, would restore the flight training policy to the interpretation followed by the FAA for decades prior to this year. The agency's change in July 2021 came from FAA legal staff following a court's non-precedent ruling in a case involving flight training in Warbird aircraft. 
the FAA used that ruling to limit the ability of aircraft owners in the limited, experimental, and primary categories to receive flight training in their own aircraft. EAA and other associations worked quickly with the FAA to provide immediate relief, which eventually came as a letter of deviation authority to provide for such training. EAA maintains that the LOTA program should be a temporary solution and that flight training in these aircraft should be restored to historic norms. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.